or tell one to all heart call signs. They're Britain's toughest medics. Have you got any movement in your legs? Oh. Just get me out! We will be the people that are going in the direction of where something went bang when other people are going in the opposite direction. He is armed at the moment with a knife. The NHS's hazardous area response teams, HART for short, are trained to tackle the most critical cases in the most dangerous places. This is moving, this. Let's come out of there. Could be someone in water, at height, underground, overcome by gas. Whatever it is, our team are there to access them and treat them in those environments. Created after the 7-7 bombings, they're in the front line when terrorists strike. There's always that risk of this could go wrong, and it could go wrong quickly. It's been confirmed that it is a nail bomb. Specially selected. Is it now up it is? It's fallen from around 20 foot. Prepared for anything. She's currently trapped in the car by her legs. Massive intrusion into his cab. Never filmed before. Shotgun injuries to his leg. Go on, you have to blast me. It's a job that calls for courage and skill. We have got specialist kit, we have got specialist vehicles. People coming in from other agencies and they think it's like a scene out of Thunderbirds. Hold it! OK, we need him on a board in a minute, on a collar. Real life heroes risking their lives to save others. This is going to be a major incident. It's early evening and Tango team are mobile, with paramedic Matt in the lead. Doncaster. 999 road. So it sounds like uh, that we're on our way to a uh, lorry that's rolled over. It's on quite a busy motorway junction. There's a number of different hazards possible, you know, naturally the size of a wagon, you know, does offer the opportunity for there to be more people injured. The crash has happened at a junction on the M18 motorway. Matt must get up to speed fast. Hey guys, how are we doing? A refrigerated meat lorry has hit a signpost, spilling its cargo. But the driver is trapped in his crushed cab. He's pinned by what, to, what looks to be like the steering wheel. Lee will take charge of the driver's care. I'll fit for all of you. Team leader Tony will coordinate his rescue with the fire service. He's currently entrapped by his leg. He's kind of caught around the steering wheel and around the steering column. This is gas and air to help with your pain. What we, we kind of do is making sure that he's ready and stable before we can move the front of the truck off. A volunteer first aider saw the crash and stopped to help. I have to broke the front windshield because it, it is a, the only access to the cabin. Uh, luckily, I find um, a little gap on the roof of the truck and I get inside Cheers. and open the window with my feet so the paramedics can get to the... Keep your head still, buddy. I know it's hurting your arm, but your neck's quite important as well, yeah? Firefighters are trying to work out exactly how to free the Portuguese driver, Horacia de Assusao. Using the winch off a mower, and they're literally just going to try and pull the front of this truck off of him. Right. All right. So we're obviously going to keep an eye on that it's not going to cause him any more hassle. Once that's pulled off of his leg, yeah. straight onto a board, yeah. out of there, so we're hopefully we can get out from the front. When we pull that steering column, mate, it's going to pull away from him. It's going to pull away from his leg, isn't it? Lee, all right, you guys are in there. When they're ready to move this, you tell us if you're ready for them to do it, all right? Enormous forces will be at work, and Lee's safety is at stake, along with his patient. What's going to happen is Fire Brigade are using a winch and they're going to try and pull the front of the truck away from the patient to try and create a space where he's trapped. So we're trying to get him stabilised first, get him treated for any pain, uh, and then hopefully we can get him out of there. They'll monitor his heart and blood pressure as the winch starts to work. I'm just going to make sure we're settled and then we'll start moving column and I'll recheck his BP once it's out at where. OK, mate. Right, mate, right, good to go. Ready? Right, check. If anything hurts, shout up straight away, all right, and everything stops, all right? Brute force is bending the steering column away from their patient. The cable is under huge tension. We're just going to hang fire here whilst that's getting pulled out. We have pulled the steering wheel away, but it's this mechanism down bottom. That doesn't seem to be moving. 
but I can see more his leg. You'll feel as though you can pull it out. Oh, yeah, that's just it. If you put a bit more painkillers in, then we'll work with you all right. Watch that arm, though. That's where his pain is. Right, OK. At last, the steel column yields. Sean! Yes, Paul? We're clear. The team can now examine their patient properly for the first time. Have you got any pain in your back or your neck at the moment? Back, on the back. In the middle or off bottom. the bottom? Right, the bottom. Let's just let me have a feel a minute. He's got lower back pain, but it's right lateral, so he's got no central pain. We're just going to step out. I'm happy that he's got no particular back injury at the moment. It's good news. Moving the front of the cab while moving the steering column off of his legs. They managed to completely free his legs. Um, and on inspection, there were no injuries to his legs. They were just kind of mechanically trapped. So when, mate. Yeah. All right, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. After almost an hour, Horacea is free. With, with assistance, he's walked out of the, the vehicle. So now the, the strapping down, because obviously we're still concerned about his back and spine. Yeah, you just lay down, pal. But the fact that he's walked away from this is just incredible, really. It's an outcome that looks almost too good to be true. The team won't relax until they've seen the results of the hospital tests. In the meantime, their patient needs pain relief. How's that pain in your arm? Still a 10. Yeah. Right, do you want a bit more of that gas in there? The motorway cleanup is beginning. Their patient is on his way to Doncaster Hospital for x-rays, but team leader Tony's assessment is clear. He just seems to be a very lucky gentleman that's walked away from an incident that possibly should have been a fatal crash. Every day, the heart team must prepare for the unthinkable. Got to get in the air and treat it all now. Let it guys. And the use of chemical weapons against the public is among the most frightening. My right, patient's still asystolic. I've got MIO on the phone now. I'm up with the camera, please. Their protective suits mean they're almost alone among NHS personnel in being trained and equipped to deal with lethal poisons, gases, and nerve agents. All right. But in Leeds today, the training day scenario has turned into terrifying reality. Police say they believe two Russian citizens found critically ill in Salisbury city centre have been poisoned by a military-grade nerve agent. All the UK's heart medics are trained to work together. And the Yorkshire team is being dispatched 200 miles to Wiltshire to assist in the battle to contain the nerve agent. This is what's called the National Plan. It's been implemented. It's the first time it's been used properly in the UK. It's been tested on exercise, but this is actually the first time it's been implemented for real. Church and his colleagues must prepare for anything and an indefinite stay. I think we've got everything. Do we put them drug bags back on? Intelligence suggests the attack involves Novichok, a military-grade nerve agent. Plastic bags are welly boots. That's what you need to defeat the Russians. What I can tell you about it, it took a lot of planning, a lot of resources, a lot of uh, things going on in the background, up here as well as down there, and uh, a lot of um, people bending over backwards to help out. The team will be driving through the night. They'll be part of a highly sensitive operation dealing with the aftermath of the attack in full view of the world's media. Police have named the couple fighting for their lives after what's believed to be an attack with a nerve agent in Salisbury. They're the former Russian intelligence officer, Sergei Skripal, and his 33-year-old daughter, Yulia. Mr Skripal has been living in the town. Any village, town or city where you see emergency services rushing into an area, it's going to spread panic. It's going to be a terrifying ordeal for whatever it is, no matter what the incident. Um, and you've got to bear that in mind because that in itself can present a lot of hazards to um, team leaders in any service and also to emergency responders. Hart's protective suits mean they are ideally placed to help the police take samples and search places associated with the Skripals. In just 24 hours, the secret nerve agent Novichok 
has become a household name. So we've always been trained to deal with nerve agents, to recognise the symptoms if a patient um, is, is presented to you with those symptoms. Um, and it was just going back to the training that, that we were given really, you know, we, we went through it, we relearned it on the journey down just to make sure everything was clear in our heads for, for if and when we had to deal with a patient like that. Even in March, it's uncomfortable hot work. The search team must rest frequently as the temperature rises inside their airtight suits. Chemical suits are horrendous to work in. There's no lying about it, there's no denying about it. It makes our jobs ten times harder. Your vision is reduced. You've got great big thick gloves on, which are part of the suit that you have to wear. So any kind of clinical skills that we're required to do, you can't really feel what you're doing anymore. And you've just got to practice and practice and practice it until you can do it without feel, hearing or sight most of the time. <laughs> Behind the police cordon, Yorkshire's heart medics are providing medical cover for technicians trying to find and contain one of the most lethal substances ever developed as a weapon. But after 48 hours, the operation is scaled down. Police say decontamination work is now complete at the park in Salisbury that's been at the centre of the investigation into the chemical weapon attack on Sergei and Yulia Skripal. And the team are allowed to return to base few will forget the experience. You don't want to think that you're wishing or wanting anything bad to happen, because we genuinely don't. We want to go about our lives with a, with a minimum amount of trauma that there is. But if we're asked to go to a large scale incident and we go there and we do a really good job, then you're really proud of yourself because it's put into all your training to good use. And, and that's the point of us. When darkness falls, the Hart team come face to face with a major social problem. Teenagers drink twice as much as they did in 1990, and every year around 100,000 under 16s are admitted to hospital for alcohol related conditions. We've got a crew request to assist in uh, Avercroft, which is near Wakefield. We've got a male who's uh, come to some misfortune down a, a single track. I don't know what his injuries are at this point, but uh, they've requested help, so the whole team's on route to uh, assist. Paramedic Darren knows the patient has been drinking, and it's reported he's just 12 years old. We're uh, ideally placed to assist with that, but we obviously have various uh, rescue equipment, ropes, uh, specialist stretchers, Specialist immobilisation kit. On a track off a country lane, a local ambulance crew are treating the boy by the light of head torches. It is that path there. If you take one of the lights down, just meet them, they're on the way back, I believe. As a teenager, I sort of went out a little bit early. Uh, 16, 17, I was, I was sort of try, trying my luck, trying to get into the pubs. But now we're at sort of 10, 11, 12. And, and the amounts that they're consuming is to excess. Alcohol is involved in a third of teenage suicides and a large number of road accidents involving under 16s. Hey, Evening. The team's patient has been left unable to stand. Hey, up, mate, do you want a rest? No, I'm fine, buddy, thank you. Sure. What's he done? Supposedly drunk um, a substance in a Lucas head bottle. It's going to go through bottom, yeah? Yeah, I'm at the bottom. It's not clear how much the boy drank or even what it was. Paramedics must try to find out. Hey, up, fella. Hiya. Open your eyes. How are we doing? Fine. Yeah. yeah. If it was spirits, this case could be very serious. What would it look to say, bottle? <laughs> you don't know. Whatever has happened, he's going to be taken to hospital. Oh, you're all right. Ready, steady, lift. There could have been anything in the bottle. We don't know what was in it. We don't know. You know. We can assume it's alcohol, but you know we can't take any chances with him. So we've transferred him onto this vehicle. Uh, the crew's done a really good job and managed to move him from where he was. They've carried him about half a mile till we've met up with him, and they're going to pop him off to hospital and just uh, keep an eye on him. 
but you can't take any chances with them. Once, once they go down and they become unconscious, anything could happen from that point. And it has happened many times before. Their patient faces tests to work out his blood alcohol level. But there's nothing doctors can do to reverse the effects. He'll have to sleep it off. See you later, mate. Seven percent of West Yorkshire's population speak a foreign language, and being able to talk to their patients is critical for the heart medics. All we know is we've got a head on RTC. Uh, I don't know how many cars are involved or how many patients potentially are involved. Paramedic Alex is heading to the crash scene in Batley on the outskirts of Leeds. Two cars have collided head on. Thankfully, the impact speed was low, but Alex's patient is showing signs of internal injuries. All right, stay nice and relaxed for me. But his patient's English is limited. Did the airbag hit you on your chest? Does it hurt anywhere else? She keeps moving her head. What I want you to do is I want you to keep your head nice and still for me, all right? If her neck is broken, she could cause herself catastrophic injuries. Calm your breathing down for me. Keep, keep on looking here. Thankfully, the answer to Alex's language problems is about to arrive in the shape of team leader Manny. These two lads were in this black car here waiting right. to let her pass, um, and they just said that it seems to have sped up and come across. Punjabi her English is, isn't fantastic, um, and for that reason, I decided to intervene fairly sharpish just to find out exactly what was going on and what injuries she was saying. So I started speaking in Punjabi, which um, I've been brought up with. Both my parents speak Punjabi. Their patient was born in India. Establishing her symptoms is vital. And thanks to Manny's Punjabi, they now know exactly what they are. OK. Right, so she just complained of pain to the back, neck yeah. and chest. Okay. And that's about it. Normally fitting well. She only takes iron tablets. Yeah. No other medical conditions that we're aware of. Her husband is a driving instructor. She says she was distracted by an extra mirror falling from the windscreen. All right, Camilla, I want you to turn, turn around that way. That's it. That's it, darling. Okay. Her neck pain is worrying. She's been fitted with a rigid collar, and the team are going to transfer her onto a spinal stretcher. Right. Ready, steady, slide. Stop. Stop. Ready again. Ready, steady, slide. The woman's going to be taken to the nearest A&E in Wakefield. It's been a frightening experience for the occupants of the other car, too. So we pulled up um, next to the van stationary to let, to let the car go past. And uh, the car side accelerated towards us. And then we looked, we looked into the driver's seat and she looked unconscious. Her eyes were closed and she was laying slightly forwards. And then uh, we've moved quite a substantial distance backwards after. Um, she's complaining of central neck pain. Um, the airbags have both gone off, but she's kind of crashed, so just to be on the safe side, we're immobilising her, um, put her on a scoop, and she's going off to the hospital. The team are trained to reach patients who are hard to get to for frontline ambulance crews. And sometimes these cases are surprisingly close to home. Can we put it in? Yeah, yeah. Mike team are heading for the suburb of Burstall, just two miles from base. A man's reported to have fallen 15 feet from a tree. It can be quite a serious injury and obviously it could be very, very painful. So uh, we want to treat the patient as quick as possible. So the sooner we get there, the sooner we know what's going on. The accidents happened on an overgrown area of waste ground on a former industrial site. Reports are that it could be quite difficult to access this patient. We might be needed to uh, help the crew get to the patient or even get the patient out once we've found them. But when they arrive... There's no crews. ..they find they're on their own. 
cancelling all functions. Their patient is lying under the tree he was trying to fell. Hello, fella. What's your name? Dale. Dale Birkby is in a bad way. I slipped off that tree. Just there? Yeah. there you OK. Are. They're going to need a lot of muscle power to get him to the nearest road. So he's, he's hit this as he's fallen and then bounced down onto this bit? Yeah. OK. Knocked out, you remember it all happening? Yeah. And any pain in your neck at all? No, but I can't feel my right leg. Can't feel your right leg. It's a worrying sign. It's unclear how far Dale fell or why he was there. A friend who's a tree surgeon was nearby. They just asked me last week if I'd come round, have a look and cut trees down for him. And then obviously he's decided to do it himself. My legs snapped for death and I felt like Did you, Do you feel it? Did you? You felt something go? Dale's 47 and keen on DIY, but the accident has shocked his dad. What are we doing climbing trees himself? I do not know. But uh, that's Dale. I mean, it wasn't as though he could have done any cutting or anything like that. Not pin anywhere else but your hip before I start moving you about. I think he thought that he'll save a few quid. Stepping down, managed to get his right leg on floor and it's given way under him. So, uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a lot dearer than what he anticipated. His right leg um, is shorter than his left leg and it's externally rotated. Um, right, so, sir? we're querying that he's maybe broken his hip. That can be sort of a classic sign of his hip. Are we thinking any C-spine or anything at all like he, that? He has no pain in his neck and that, but obviously we've got a distracting injury. Where's um, he falling from? So he, was still, he was trimming that bit, and then, but as he slipped back, he's hit this bit and down to there. Yeah, so right. there I'm only sure flying down, down, but I fell because my leg just gave away, it collapsed. So you were sort of stepping back onto your leg? Yeah, and it collapsed. Ah, right, that's away. changed yeah. things, yeah. yeah. It gave away. So you got that leg onto the floor and then you felt it, it go. The way in which Dale fell, what medics call the mechanism of injury, suggests a very complicated break to his hip or femur. It's hard to tell which. I bet I won't walk again, do you? Oh, don't be thinking like that. that. Until we've done an extra, we don't know what you've done, OK? Let's not start thinking worst-case scenarios. Large bone fractures are serious enough. They can lead to internal bleeding. So I'm going to give you some morphine now. It might let you feel a little bit dizzy. Sharp scratch coming up. We're going to have quite a carry out under some quite kind of unstable terrain, so we might end up needing to give him some strong light like, ketamine. The ambulance service is stretched to the limit today. There's still no vehicle to carry Dale to hospital. Do we have a crew running on this detail? Um, that is a negative at this time, over. Well, do you want him a P2 back up as soon as we can, over? Yeah, no, that's affirmative. The painkilling drugs aren't working as well as they'd hoped. Does that pain come down at all? Still 10 out of 10. They're going to use ketamine, which can give patients hallucinations. It might make you feel a little bit funny, but if you let us know, all right. All right, mate. All right. Oh, cool. Cool. You will do, mate. That's the, that's the drug working, all right? All right, we're just going to give you a little bit more. You're going to feel a little bit sleepy, all right? Dale's side effects are not pleasant. Dale, look at me. Hey. Look at me. Can you see me now? Oh, well, I'm not dying. You're not dying. You're not dying, I promise you. All right. Is my foot falling? No, 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 your foot's not falling. I'm sorry to waste your time. It's all right, mate. You should have had to come, should you? Look, we weren't doing anything. We're having a coffee. It's a long walk to the ambulance that has just arrived over treacherous ground. A bit uneven. No, that's fine. There's a lot of tripping over How's stuff, so... Well, moment? that's fine. I'm happy with that. It's a bit better. It's a bit too no, as, as long as we're all aware of what we're doing. Dale may need surgery but at least his pain is bearable, despite his hallucinations. Where's my head? It's on your body. It's still attached to your body, mate. We're going to get you onto an ambulance in a minute. Transporting a patient over rough ground is one of the hardest things that we actually do. It does require quite a high level of teamwork and coordination, because when you start moving the patient, if one person slips, then that could take the whole team out and you're going to injure the patient more. OK, ready, steady, lift. It's nice and slow, guys. You've got to be out of step, because if everybody's in step, then that's an uncomfortable ride for the patient. So there is actually quite a lot of technical issues regarding carrying a patient. Dale's injury will probably require surgery. You all right? Yeah. Dale, just relax back. Where am I? Just getting you on an ambulance. He needs the skills of doctors at the Regional Trauma Centre at Leeds General Infirmary. His dad is trying to reassure him. 
Don't you worry. I'm coming down to infirmary. I'll see you down there. Where we're going? Leeds Infirmary. Is that hospital? Yeah, LGI we're going down to. Dale's injury may be life-changing. The next few hours will be critical for him. It's lunchtime at Hart headquarters and Tango team are loading up on calories. Enjoying that sandwich. But there'll be no time for Pud today. RTC believe car overturned and it isn't far from station, so we should be on scene within a few seconds. I reckon it's there. The crash has happened outside a major out of town shopping centre. The drivers reported trapped. A delivery van carrying pies has left the road, taken out a sign and turned over. Did you get yourself onto there? Yeah, no, we just left that out. All right, fair enough. Any pains yeah, anywhere? Just on that knee. Right. Driver Richard Wright's leg looks broken. Are you able to bend it at all? Just, just generally, don't try too hard. You tell me if it's... OK, stop, stop, all right, yeah. Richard had just finished his delivery round. He was thrown around the cab in the accident. Tony must examine him carefully. Best thing I try and do is splint that where it is, and then we'll get you down. So it might just be a little case of getting a little bit of manpower on you to get you down, all right. It's possible the pain from his knee is distracting Richard from the symptoms of a more serious injury. The team must be careful moving him. You <laughs> can't bend it at all, so it's going to have to be manpower to get him down. We're going to get the stretcher off us, so... Yeah. yeah. They're going to immobilise their patient. There you go. An ambulance has arrived to take him to hospital in Leeds. But first, he's been given gas and air to dull the pain. Oh, hey, oh. Working, but yeah. It's better than Jack Daniels, isn't it? Beautiful. <laughs> Same kind of a thing. That better, Jack Daniels. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it is good or not, because oh, I'm seeing three of them. You know what I'm saying, the ring? <laughs> One's bad enough. It is, trust us. Right then, right. bum slide down there then. Richard runs a one-man business. His van is now a write-off, and he's no longer fit to drive. Right? Yeah. Same again. Lean on me if you have to. Yeah. There you go, carry it away. No new pins, now you'll be moving around off there, is there? Oh, a bit more of that gas in there. Are you sure? The impact this accident will have on his life is only just sinking in, but he's staying cheerful. Do you want to bring any pies with you? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Fellow drivers rushed to help Richard in the moments following the crash. We saw the van as it is now, um, and a group of people trying to get somebody out. So me and my colleagues stopped um, and offered assistance because we're first aid trained um, and jumped out. The gentleman was in quite a bit of pain, um, so we just supported him until the emergency services came. Richards had a lucky escape. So obviously it's, it's only a very small Suzuki van. Um, there's not a lot of weight in these. Uh, it's empty in the back. Um, but he must have been coming along at a reasonable speed to have hit a bollard, um, hit the signpost and then flipped. It's rolled onto its passenger side, which has probably held the driver because of the fact that it's rolled onto the side furthest away from him. It looks like their patient has relatively minor injuries unlike his van. But tests at Leeds General Infirmary may change that. OK, guys, so what we've got today is a training exercise to use the MIBS, the scoop stretcher and the collar. Inside the heart training centre, the team practised the delicate art of rescuing patients using muscle power, ingenuity and technology. So nice and steady, guys, just like we usually would on a job. Conscious and breathing. The most versatile weapon on Hart's life-saving armoury is the multi-integrated body splint, MIBS for short. MIBS is brilliant. It comes part and parcel of being on the Hart team. Ready, steady, roll. Makes the patient really secure. Um, it gives us a lot of moving and handling options, so we can literally get any patient out of any situation. It's a stretcher that cocoons patients and allows multiple medics to lift them to safety. 
We've used it literally everywhere. We've taken people out of windows using it, down steep staircases, up through cellars, uh, down bankings, railway lines, you name it, that piece of equipment has probably been there. Today, Mike's team have been called to a patient trapped in his own home in the suburbs of Leeds. Their mission is to get him to hospital. Is it David? Yeah. Hi, David. I'm Alex. This is Manny. Yeah. Ex-rugby player David Matthews is 65 and in agony after surgery for a long-standing sporting injury. The chap we've got in there um, has had an operation on his spine last week um, and had some discs fused. Since he came home on Saturday, he's been pretty much bed-bound. They've called for us because he basically can't get on top of the pain. Heart carry the very strongest drugs, but to inject them, they must find a vein big enough for an intravenous needle. You've got an out, David, have you? I mean, that's not even it's trickled a tiny bit, but it's like a scratch would do anyway. Without painkillers, David will be unable to endure the difficult journey to his own front door. We're upstairs in his bedroom. He's got a staircase. It's in an L shape, which obviously creates us a little bit of a problem. Um, now, it's difficult to bob him on a chair because of his neck. So what we're going to have to do is we have to package him as he is and then manhandle him downstairs. Yeah. Really sharp scratch, but stay really still for me. Sorry, David, we're attacking you from all angles. Keep that foot as still as you can for me, David, all right? Sharp scratch. We've got that needle in now, all right? Yeah. We can start getting you some pain relief. Are you sorting that morphine, Andy? I am, mate, yeah. Thank you. David has dedicated his life to sport and manages a university rugby team. So if he's been able to stand and move onto a chair, do you think? No, no, no chance whatsoever. His wife and sons are worried. Well, yeah, that's what I'm just thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if the chair was, like, right behind him, if it was to be able to, like... That was restricted. the pain's under control, yeah. control so possibly, yeah. yeah. He'd be able to stand Let's, let's, let's see how he is, because I don't want him to be in pain anyway whilst we're moving no. in. How are you feeling? Is that starting to help a little bit? Yeah. Good. Mm. Obviously, he's had recent surgery on his neck, <coughs> uh, which just causes a, a little bit of a concern on, on what's going on inside. OK, I'll move, ready, brace, move. There we go, lovely. Good birthday, sir. Is it? Many happy returns. David's now paying a terrible price for his playing career. OK, I'm going on move, ready, brace, move. The surgery was aimed at reducing chronic spinal pain. That wasn't too bad, was it, mate? Just let your head relax to a position you're comfortable. We can prop it up more if you need it. If you guys are happy, my plan is we'll just take him straight out onto the banister and then we can just hopefully lay him down on the floor. David's now been wrapped in the mibs. It will help the team carry him downstairs. Yep. OK. Right, stop there a minute. Right, just pause. He's being held rigidly and shielded from the pain that any movement would create. Watch his feet over head. Your hallways, staircases, things like that, they're always quite tricky to get patients down. You say set out for feet first, Andy. Feet first, yeah. Oh, hang on, stop, hang on. stop, stop. Just stop. Watch you twisting them a bit. Someone like David, who's got a spine problem that's that's not through trauma or anything like that, it, it exacerbates it more. And and being able to package someone up in the mibs like we have done, it just makes it a lot easier for handling. Evacuating patients from their homes is a growing part of the team's job. We're getting called more and more, and uh, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, uh, as crews are recognising that we've got the equipment and we've got the manpower to be able to help them. It's good that we can get out there and provide that support to our colleagues in Ops. <laughs> David's now on his way to hospital. There you go. It's hoped doctors can control his pain more effectively until the wounds left by his operation heal. It's late afternoon in Leeds, and paramedics Gemma and Deep are heading out into the rush hour, leading the heart convoy. Someone's fallen uh, quite a long way, about 25 feet, I think it said, um, inside a building in, in Leeds. I believe it said he's 
unconscious, not responding. Here we are, I guess. The accident has happened at a food warehouse in Sheepscar. The victim fell from the roof. He has life-threatening injuries. Danny, put your arm back down at your side. It's falling. Thank you. Danny, oh, listen, what's going on? Listen. No one actually right. saw it, but when they came and heard the bang, he was on the floor, roaming around. OK. We were landing his legs on his side. And we got here. And Jesus was about 10, 11. Danny Jones has fallen onto concrete. Witnesses called him in to repair a leak. I was just working in the office, and from the corner of my eye, I saw something coming down, and I heard this really awful noise. And as it came down, the poor lad was on the floor, and he was like in a spasm. He was shaking, his eyes were rolling. He couldn't really breathe properly, and that's why I just got onto the ambulance. On your call when you're ready, Everyone buddy. ready? Yes. So on roll, ready. Ready. Roll. OK. The team are concerned Danny has damaged his spine as well as his pelvis. They're strapping him to a rigid stretcher to protect his back. On this one. You need it on. Danny, protect, Why? to protect your spine. You want to walk again, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, my back, my back is really hurt. I know. Stay I know. still if you can, Danny. That leg for me. I've got an awful pain in my back. I know. The sooner we get you up, the sooner we get some pain relief. Okay. But you keep nice really and still. Roll. We're going to sort you out. We're just going to get this board underneath you, yeah, and then we're going to get you sorted. Anybody not ready? Okay. Ready. Brace. Move. Top seat. Ready. Brace. Down. Okay. So you're just going to feel some straps going across your body. I'm it's just to keep you nice and still. I know we're going to sort that out right now. Right now. Yeah. Danny is in agony, and he seems confused. It could be the sign of a head injury. Danny, keep your hands across your stomach first. Do you want me to stick half of it? Yep. Ow! Danny, hands across your tummy. My back is hurting. I know, hands on your tummy. Everybody ready? Ready, brace, move. It's vital the team piece together exactly how Danny fell. It could give valuable clues to the doctors who must treat him. He's been half in and half out of there. Right. They've heard a bang come and they found him on the floor. He's on his side, fetal position. Not really making much sense. We got here, equally, roll on his foot, roll on his back, wouldn't listen to us. When he got the scoop, came back, and then he was, as he is now, he's just 14, a bit confused about where he is, what's happened. Time is of the essence. It's feared Danny's broken pelvis is causing internal bleeding. He's a bit pale compared to normal when I spoke with his colleagues. Danny is continuing to resist his rescuers. Ow! Hold still. Oh, I'm going to get up. Nah, you're not getting up, Danny. Why? Because you need to go to hospital. For what? Can't I just chill for a minute? Just no. keep this arm still, mate. Because right. you hurt your back. Their patient's condition is beginning to deteriorate. What's the last thing you remember, Danny? Do you remember being at work? No. You don't remember being at work? Do you remember getting up this morning? This is doing my nothing. No, you don't, Danny. It's doing my head here. Just run your tongue round your mouth for me, top and bottom. And your teeth feel as they normally do. Yeah, she's a bit sorry. So, but nothing's loose. No. Nothing sharp that shouldn't be. No. I'm not comfy, mate. I know, we're going to sort that out now. My mate's just throwing some more drugs up. You've got one running now that's just starting to kick in. Ow. We're going to get you some more pain relief sorted, all right, mate? Danny's about to become a dad for the third time. I've got a son, and is everything going to be all right? Yeah, everything's going to be just fine. Danny's on his way to the major trauma centre at Leeds General Infirmary. He may need emergency surgery. His outlook is uncertain. Putting in the miles in the team gym is the most popular way for the heart medics to keep fit. They must pass gruelling stamina tests every six months. But running has its dangers too. We're going to a runner in uh, Roundy Park. Um, apparently they've been running and gone over on their ankle and um, they believe it's broken. Uh, they can't walk and they're not that close to um, any easy access, which is why the road crew's having, uh, having an issue with it. Keep right to the road. Night is falling and trees are adding to the gloom. If you go down to the woods today, you're in for a big surprise. If you go down to the woods today, you'll never believe you're right. What can I get you? Simon's going to fill up the recce. 
Good evening. Right, I'll just uh, I'll see what the state of play is. Yeah. Hotel one, hotel two receiving. Hotel two, fast message over. Come and get brand carrier and stretch it out. Or... In the biggest park in Leeds, a race has ended in agony for one runner. All right. Fractured ankle query. Um, patients on Entonox uh, with the local crew in quite a lot of pain. Obviously can't wait back, can't walk, so we'll pick her up on the NATO stretcher and just wheel back to the ambulance on the brand carrier. Sweet Tong was on an evening fun run when she fell. So in a minute, put all of your weight down through your good leg. Yep. And we need to... I'll give you a bit of support yeah, on this sorry, one. I'm busy. Yeah. That's okay. That's ready, set, stand all yep. through your good leg. Well done, yep. perfect. Other runners stop to help. We're just running down here, and I think she just hit a foot on either the root or maybe an upturned stone, and just went down. And uh, she was in quite a bit of pain for quite a while. Okay. I was out sort of patrolling the course while uh, everybody was out running. Uh, Ian's our, our, our uh, tail runner, so I got a call from Ian. He said there'd been a, an incident in, in in this area of the woods, so I mountain biked over to meet Ian. Um, we had first aiders back at Race HQ, but decided to call the ambulance straight away because we knew she was going to have to go to hospital. Sweet's injuries aren't serious, but yeah. getting her to the ambulance will take manpower. Yeah. Right then, let's go. Let's go. We've tried to get access to the park um, with the park security and been unable to get hold of them. So we've been unable to get through the gate with our four-wheel drive vehicle. We could have just driven down. So we've taken the brand carry, which is um, First World War military technology. It's basically just a canvas stretcher, two poles and some wheels. Um, which has done the job absolutely fine. She's on analgesia, um, it's a little bit bumpy on the stretcher, but it's, it's nothing that she can't cope with with the analgesia. Hand it over to the crew and we're back up again. Sweet's off to hospital for x-rays. This might be her last run for some time. Thankfully, x-rays revealed her ankle was not broken, but a severe sprain required surgery and she's still unable to run. Horacea, the trucker trapped in his cab after a motorway crash, was sent home after an overnight stay in hospital. Miraculously, he'd escaped any serious injury. Dale, who fell from a tree he was trying to trim, fractured his thigh bone. He spent three weeks in Lee's General Infirmary, but has since recovered. The motorist, whose symptoms were translated by paramedic Manny, was released from hospital after x-rays ruled out any serious injuries. Van driver Richard suffered severe tendon damage, but his leg was not broken. Spinal surgery patient David spent four days in the hospital high dependency unit, and it was six weeks before he was back on his feet. And roofer Danny, who plunged through a skylight onto concrete, fractured his skull, chipped several vertebrae and broke his pelvis as well as 10 ribs. He was released from hospital in time for the birth of his son. Make sure you've got Thursday the 21st of Feb circled for the start of new and exclusive Black at 10. The next, Inside the Ambulance.